previously on Line of Fire. You want to go to dinner with me? Look, Ray, I, I don't, I don't think. I could probably talk to Jaden. I need the dough, okay? Jesse Sherwood, Clemson Tigers, Jonah Malloy. This is what you came to talk to me about, Jesse Sherwood? I thought maybe if your guys took a look at him. Oh, I'm sorry, Jonah. We just wouldn't be interested. Well, it's a favor then. Why don't I do what I do, and you do what you do? He said that? Yeah, he said that, Donovan, to me, to my face. Oh, I want to beat this man. I want to beat him badly, but not by putting a 22 behind his ear. I want him in my office one day, begging for favors so I can spit in his face. That's how you beat a man like Eddie Evans. this morning. Well, how long have you been here? An hour? An hour and a half. I already flagged two Where suspect deposits. Out of how many? 10,000? I hate to bust your bubble page, but this assignment is a waste That's of time. That's not our decision to make. All right, Captain. I was Army, not Navy. Yes, sir, Captain. And when I left the Army, I was a Major. Really? Yeah, really. Was well, the Major busy tonight? You know, what? <laughs> come on, man. I'm not hitting on you. I just, there's a little party tonight in Georgetown. I thought maybe you'd like to come. Well, she'd rather stay here and go blind. Thanks. Little party. It's an amazing house. Right? Hey, Dad. Oh, would you excuse me? Sure, of course. This is the agent I was telling you about. Paige Van Dorn, my father, Kenneth Stevens. <laughs> my pleasure, <laughs> Very nice to meet you. Your son didn't tell me you were going to be here. Hmm, that's funny, considering it's my house. <laughs> Slipped my mind. Obviously. Todd likes surprises. Oh, really? Like uh, joining the FBI, for instance. OK, um, I'm, you would like a drink? Yeah, yeah, I would. Uh, sparkling water with a lime. <laughs> Thanks. It's an honor to be here, sir. Really, Todd's told me about your work with HUD and with the Urban League. Uh, no, I'm just an overpaid lawyer lobbyist like half the people in this town. So, you're here on temporary duty? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're investigating possible financial ties to terrorist organizations. Interesting. So, you're Todd's partner. That boy leads a charmed life. Well, I'm... We're just partners on this one. You know, I'll be honest with you. I think my son joined the Bureau just to stick it to the old man. Hey, not that I blame him. I wrote him pretty hard in law school. But he was born to be a politician, not a policeman. Really, a politician? Oh, yeah. You know, I can see that. Don't fly away. Voice, <laughs> ma'am. Hey, Jimmy, it's me. Listen, man, I'm, uh, I'm in a bad way. I'm about six inches away from a drink. So if you get this anytime soon... Hey, Dibs. Oh. Hey, Dibs. What's that, Jada? No. No? You talk to her? No, nah, man. You know, you... Jada, she's a grown woman, you know, and she can do whatever she wants. She has no right to keep me from seeing my baby. Hey. Hey, boys. Hey, baby. Roy, he got a minute? Yeah, sure. That's it. So. So. Man, what she got me out here for the garbage, huh? I need a favor, Roy. <sighs> Who's this? Some guy. No. Look, I'm not stupid, Roy. I know what goes on, okay? And I, I know what Mr. Malloy does. Sam, I'm outside I, of the I, paper company in the house. I don't I, know I what know. you're asking me to do. I want but... that guy taken care of this Thursday. Taken care of this Thursday. Money. I have enough. I have I, like $10,000. No, no, I'm just, saving Who is this guy? The... Huh? 
see some guy that that that, that, that hurt you or one of the girls at the house? I don't I don't know. I don't get into the whorehouse business, but no, that's, it's that's not what this is. Whorehouse business. Hey. you have political ambitions. Oh, my father has political ambitions. Ah, eh, come on. Your secret's safe with me. What is it? Mayor Stevens? Governor Stevens? Senator Stevens? <gasps> That's it, isn't it? No, look, Todd wants to be a senator. And here I thought you were a lazy bum. No, all that. <laughs> so you really do want to serve your country, huh? Yeah. yeah. Todd? Erica Logan, Con Law, sat behind you in class. Erica? Wow. Um, you... Lost weight? <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Paige Van Dorn. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm sorry. Um, what have you been doing these days? I'm an assistant U.S. attorney. Oh, okay. I'm with the FBI. I know. It's the reason I came here to see you. It's a civil rights matter, a lynching over 50 years ago. I'm coming to you because it happened in your jurisdiction and, well, the Todd Stevens that I remember was always down to do the right thing. You heard that Judge Littlefield died yesterday? Yeah, the appellate court judge. I used to clerk for him out of Cornell. He called me two days ago. He knew that he was dying and he wanted to confess. He told me a story about how he and a few white boys strung up a black teenager 52 years ago. All the other participants are dead except for one, Glenn Boulder. Senator Glenn Boulder? Well, you know, I've heard and, and read about Boulder's past, but those are just rumors. I mean, Boulder's been a, a giant on civil rights for decades. You walk with Dr. King, eh? You really want the FBI to go after Glenn Boulder? I want the FBI to go after a killer. It's not enough to convict. You know that, Steve. I know. It's why I contacted Todd, because it happened in your jurisdiction. You know, I'm having a hard time with this, too, but even if there's the slightest chance, shouldn't we investigate? We are talking about U.S. Senator Glenn Boulder. He is the ranking Democrat on the Judiciary Committee. We know. Would you excuse us for a moment, please? No problem. Thanks. I understand why Judge Littlefield would want to make this confession, but why would he indict his old friend, Glenn Boulder, on tape, no less? I don't know. I mean, Boulder's always been a personal hero of mine. I, it's just so incredible. I, well, it's so incredible what? That it has to be true? He's a U.S. senator. You don't think this would have come out before? Well, maybe nobody was looking back then. Maybe it was easier to bury things. There's a lot of folks who know better now belong to the Klan when they were young. Look at Robert Byrd. Stevens, I am supposed to be allocating all available assets to counterterrorism. Washington would have my head on a plate if I took you off TDY for this. Civil rights is still a major priority of the Bureau. I know what our priorities are, Stevens. I'm going to give you a week, but this is for a preliminary Wait. investigation only. I want you strictly I under the radar. I mean it, Stevens.
Like clockwork. What the hell are you doing here? Come on, I tried your cell. I couldn't get through to you, so I thought I'd come here. I just want you to run a sheet on this guy. Rex Booth, who's that? The guys were talking crap about him. He's probably just a job. Beat up a couple of girls at the whorehouse. So just, uh, want to see if there's anything there, you know? Okay. Everything else all right? You doing okay? Yeah, why? Shrinks say you have contact with them for an evaluation. You know what? I j Look, I'm fine, okay? Shrinks are a bunch of assholes anyways. You know that. I'm surprised you're not uh, smoking while you jog. <laughs> Don't remind me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, run that name for me, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Todd Stevens, I'm with the FBI. Hey, Kevin, when's the air conditioning man gonna get here? Gonna be here this afternoon, Chief, sorry. Oh, damn, it's hot. Well, take your coat off, at least. Or is that against FBI regulations? Not mine. Look, I did some checking on the QT, uh, like you asked, and nobody around here knows anything about a lynching, especially not 50 years ago. Nothing in your records? <laughs> what records? Lynching records? I was thinking death certificates, perhaps. Need a name to. Look up a death certificate. Right. Even so, wouldn't help. Why not? County doesn't keep death records? No, it didn't back then. At least not for the... Not for black people. No name, no body. I'll help all I can, but that's a mighty hard road to hold. Thanks. Do you have a public library here? Yeah, three blocks down on Folsom and Fifth. How's the water? It's good. Biggs is here. Thanks for waiting. You see, I, I need to keep my girlish figure. So, uh, Mr. Eddie Evans. Yes, tell me. What do you have? Well, as far as the baseball team is concerned, everything seems to be pretty much on the up and up. Uh -huh. Well, what do you have that's not on the up and up? Well, I got some good SEC stuff. Back in 1981, old Eddie got a tip on a pharmaceutical. It wasn't worth much. It was a garden variety two-step. Excuse me, excuse me. This is what you have? Some SEC stuff? Um, yeah. <clears throat> From 23 years ago. This is what I get for eight grand when I send you out to, and I believe these were my exact words, bury this wasp asshole deeper than Jimmy Hoffa. Well, sir, we're pretty much in Boy Scoutville with Eddie Evans. I, he's married to his high school sweetheart. He's been audited five times and had money returned three of those times. Eddie. Plays a little poker, but... Eddie Evans that's like, plays poker? Yeah, he plays a lot of tournament poker. I believe seven card is his game of choice. Eddie Evans plays poker. Hey. Hey. So I, I checked out your guy, Rex Booth. I couldn't find anything. The guy's a high school teacher. He's on disability for his eyes, but that's it. I couldn't even find a parking ticket. Never know. Mm-mm. OK. I gotta do this. Good luck. Thanks. How you doing there, Jonah? Eddie, good to see you. I see you have some new memorabilia up there, huh? Well, I'm as much a fan as I am an owner. You have been attending the games? Oh, yeah. Come on, Eddie. Lewis is just on fire. Any chance of losing him to the bigs? Wouldn't be the first. So, what's up, Jonah? My secretary told me I needed to clear out a half hour. He said that it was urgent. Urgent? No. No, I, I just like to drop in on my customers once in a while, make sure that they're happy. <laughs> sure, Jonah. No complaints about any of our paper products. Babe Ruth? You bet. May I? Sure. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Jonah, I don't care what people say about you. Any man who adores baseball as much as I do can't be all bad. Oh, you have no idea, Eddie. No idea. I have three loves in life. My family, baseball, and poker. Poker? Do you play? Thursday nights. You play? 
Are you serious? I'm a student of the game. No kidding. You know, Eddie, it is amazing how much you and I have in common. I just, I just love that game. I just love that game. In fact, I have a big game tonight. Oh, really? Huge, actually. In Atlantic City. Seven-card stud. With Herb Atkins, you know him? Mm -mm. He's a billionaire from Oklahoma. He's put together a game. Yeah? Well, I'm nervous. I mean, I hear the guy's a fish, but Hell's Bells, the buy-in is a quarter million. <laughs> Jonah, let me ask you. Is there any room left at the table? Jackie Simon. Hi, Todd Stevens, FBI. Please have a seat and take that jacket off, for goodness sake. Must be 90 degrees out there. <laughs> Mr. Simon, uh, I'm here about the... Lynching, I know. My nephew is the desk sergeant at the police department. Well, the alleged incident took place in 1952. Chief Wood wasn't able to provide any leads. That cracker wouldn't know a snake if it crawled up his backside and came out of his nose. Well, I went to the library and I checked some of the high school yearbooks from the early 50s. You know, you're the only high school student from back then that still lives around here. I'm sorry. Tell me why you're here again. Um, well, we received recent information that several white men, prominent white men, may have killed a black boy. If I find sufficient evidence, the FBI will open up a full investigation. What kind of evidence are you looking for? Anything I can get. Interviews, mostly. Hmm. People talking, you mean? Yes, ma'am. Do you know something, Mr. Simon? Afraid I don't. Now, I found something unusual in the yearbooks. Uh, only one student from the sophomore class of 1952 doesn't appear in the junior class of 1953. A boy. His name is Samuel Allen. Not ringing any bells, but that was 50 years ago. Jackie, thank you for getting me through math. See you next fall. Sam. He didn't have a chance, did he? That was from your library. Oh, hey. Yeah? Yeah, my, my car broke down here. I was wondering if I could use your phone to call a car service. What's wrong with it? Ah, uh, I don't know. I'm not really a car person. Okay, you, uh, let me take a peek? No, 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 that's okay. I'd pay good money for the service. There's a phone in the kitchen. All right, thank you. Uh, it's, uh, through there to the right. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, my, my, my car broke down. I was wondering if I could get towed. I don't know. It just kind of, it petered out on me. Maybe, uh, it's the fuel injection or something. You, uh, you okay? Yeah. Great, thanks. Okay. That's, uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, it must be the carburetor or something. Uh-huh. Bambi. Hey, I need to talk to you. Roy. Come on. Let's go back inside. Come on. I have to go. Come on. Whoa. What do you need, Roy? 
It's a nice TV. Look, I told you I have to go to work. Do you need something? Yeah, I need something, Bambi. I need you to knock off this attitude of yours. You got no right to be pissed off at me. Look, some people are friends and some aren't, okay? I needed you and you weren't there. I asked you for a favor and you just, you, you totally you blew me off. A favor? You asked me to kill somebody, Bambi, okay? Where I come from, no matter who's doing the asking, that's not an automatic yes. What do you want? I want to know why you want me to kill your father. How did you know that he's my father? Research. Why, why do you even because care? Because I do, okay? I, I care about you. Why do you think I want him dead? Look, Roy, tomorrow is my birthday. 21. My dad always said, you can do what you want when you're 21. Well, guess what? You can get that drink at the Canal Club. For my birthday, I want him dead. Believe me, Roy, he deserves to be dead. Okay, look. Some people deserve killing. That's true. Listen, Bambi, you do this. And you're the one who's gonna have to live with it, okay? And you do not deserve that. Look, thanks for the brotherly advice, Roy. I have to go. I have an 11.30. Hey. You need to go. You're my only way of doing this. I'm sorry. Pair nine, start the betting, Mr. D. He checks. Three grand. I call. Open them up, boys. Straight to the 10. Straight to the 10. Beat it and take it. Straight is good. <laughs> it's all yours, Mr. E. You're streaking, Eddie. Hell, I sure could use a turnaround. You know, I have made some bad bets in my time, but that one, I'm going to remember. <laughs> well, Herb, you got to throw me a bone every once in a while. King, nine, jack, king of spades will start the betting. Uh, king says 2,000 without even looking. All right. Mr. K? I'm out. So Jonah tells me you own a double-A baseball club. Richmond Mockingbirds. Call. How's your season going? Well, they're 12 and 3. First baseman Lewis Seven, is just amazing. Six, eight. Mm -hmm. King's a pair. Well, didn't get any cheaper, gentlemen. King say 2,000. That's that with that. Well, it's a friendly game. Um, let's just step it up to four grand. You're going to raise into me with a three and a nine? <laughs> <laughs> you got aces wired, Eddie? You want to look at them, you pay for them. No, what the hell? It's only money. I can look at one more I call. Five, six, three kings. Well, gentlemen, the price of poker just went up. 20000 So, Eddie, you ever uh, have your team throw a game? Pardon me? Come on, Eddie, it's just us girls here. Huh? Did you ever throw a game? Call. Of course not. What is it with this guy? I don't know. What are you talking about, Herb? Just making conversation. Trip Kings is still the better. Let's make it 100000 You know, if I was told that Every sporting event ever was fixed. I wouldn't be surprised. I call. You know, I am feeling very confident. Let's see who's got balls. I bet it all. The bet is 1.1 million. Mr. Evans, we're playing table stakes. You can play all in if you'd like. Um, may I request a five minute break? Sure, Eddie.
take all the time you need. Eddie, bet what you have. Don't get greedy and don't gamble right, more well, than you can afford. Jonah, you don't understand. I have four nines. I know you told me that, but he's pretty confident he may have four kings. No, no, no. The guy with the beard had the case of king. Atkins can't win. Are you sure about the guy with the beard? I thought he had the jack. Jonah, I play poker. This is what I do. Atkins can't win. I'm telling you. Gentlemen, that's time. Eddie, this is a million dollar loan. When can I get it back? Jonah? It's a sure thing. Tomorrow. And Jesse Sherwood gets a tryout. You got it. OK, let's do this. <laughs> so what's the story, Eddie? You in or out? I'll cover the bet, Herb. You'll cover the bet. Yes, I will. So the bet is called. All right, boys. Spread them. Four nines. Four kings. No, no. That's impossible. You had the fourth king. I swear to God, I saw it in here. No way. It's true. They switched it. No, they had to. I saw it come out early. No, it came out early. doing here? What's going on? Uh, I bought you for the day. Pretty impressed with yourself, huh? <laughs> no, no, not that. I, I, I paid the house off so I could take you out on your birthday. Uh, happy birthday, by, by the way. Thanks. Look, you don't, you don't have to do this. Hey, it's your birthday, OK? Now, I've been keeping track ever since I met you, and I, I kept a list of all the things that you love in life, okay? So we're going to lunch at Havana 59, then I'm going to take you to that pottery-making place you told me about, and then uh, we're going to go shopping for blouses, because I, I always need new blouses, and then we're going to see that one Joan Allen movie you hadn't seen yet. Does that sound good? Should I change? And deal me out. Yes, sir. Deuce of spades, ace of hearts, four of diamonds. Mr. Diaz, your bet number. Eddie. Check. It happens, Eddie. It happens. You know, uh, I could loan you, say, 10K. I mean, you won't climb out of the hole, but you could play a little bit. I don't have the money. I'm, I'm sorry, what? What? I don't have a million. Eddie, look at me now. Eddie, you know who I am, right? And you know I'm not in the business of giving away money. It was a sure thing. Well, it seems not, Eddie. I have 150K. I can get it to you this afternoon. You have 15% of what you owe me? This is what you're telling me? This afternoon, you want to cash. <sighs> I want 15% of the team. The cash, too, but I want 15% of the team. Jonah, no, but... And I want the baseball. I want the Babe Ruth baseball. Understood? Agent Stevens? This is Simon. That was a dirty trick you pulled using that yearbook. I'm sorry. Okay. Let's go for a walk. 
Sam was coming home from visiting family in Carolina. Some folks saw him get off the bus in Hayward. That was the depot then. That was the last anyone laid eyes on him. Word got around that some white boys out fishing caught him talking to a white girl, killed him. Was there an investigation? Rural Virginia, 1952. Son, you have no idea. Well, why didn't you talk to me before at the house? I stir things up. No one remembers nothing about Sam Allen. Why make trouble? It's a good question. Why? Because he was my friend and they killed him. Who killed him? I don't know. Here we are. Legend is that after those white boys killed him, they buried him right there under that mound. Oh, the black boys used to take the little ones down here to scare them. You know what I mean, boogeyman. Mrs. Simon, do you know who owns this property? It belongs to Senator Boulder. Everybody knows that. Been in his family for years. Not enough. I disagree. We don't go digging for bodies unless we got a whole lot more than this. This mound is not natural. What, all of a sudden you're a geology expert? We go digging in Boulder's yard, it's headline news. We put the Bureau's reputation on the line when we need all the congressional support we can get. I'm not willing to do that based on this woman's testimony. Well, I am. Excuse me. Look, I know this case is important to you, but it cannot be more important than the law. <sighs> Find yourself some more evidence. Sorry. My church is this very chapel of democracy that we sit in together, and I do not need God to tell me what are my moral absolutes. I need my heart, my brain, and this church. Hey, what are you doing? Do you still have that money? I still have the money. I don't have to worry. Good. I want to give you something. Roy, this, this is a lot of money. Yeah. No, I mean, a lot. What's, what's in here? It's uh, 30 weeks pay. It's almost 40 grand. Go somewhere, kid. Huh? Just, <laughs> hey, go somewhere. Enroll in community college, I don't know. Learn something. What are you trying to tell me? You want me out of your life? No. No, that's not what I'm saying. Roy, this is, this is a lot of money. I can't take it. I. I... I can't. You're a very kind man. Then, hey, you know, why deny me the right to be kind? It's just... Let's just, well, let's just watch the, the uh, rest of the movie. It gave women the right to vote. It gave us every freedom no that one we hold dear. No one has cared about me in such a long time. You know, about a month after I got into the business, like three years ago, I started doing something I never should have done. Huh? I started counting. I've had sex with 507 men. I've had sex about 1,500 times. Do you know the number one rule of being with the John? No kissing. Right, I haven't been kissed in three years. No. What? No, that's, that's not what I meant. 
I don't want a mercy kiss. Then give me one. Stevens. Excuse me, Todd Stevens? Yeah, I work for Senator Boulder. We spoke on the phone. Would you follow me, please? The center's waiting for you. Senator? Sir? Ah, Mr. Stevens. Thank you for coming on such short notice. Well, it's not every day you get a call from a U.S. Senator. I suppose not. So, I understand you are investigating me for murder. Well, that's incorrect, sir. I'm looking into a lynching that might have happened in 1952. Why would you think I'm investigating you? Because I have been guilty. Sir, you understand that I'm a special agent with the FBI, so uh, anything... I didn't string him up. I didn't put the noose around his neck. But I saw it happen. I did nothing to stop it. Never talked about it since. So, what is that? Accessory to murder, conspiracy, all those things. We had heard that he had rigged to go. Well, anyway, that's what we heard. It is the stain of my life. Since that time, I... I ran for office five years later. One, I have sponsored 23 civil rights bills. Gotten most of them through. You name it, I sponsored it right here. None of that would have happened without Samuel Allen. Because the goal of my life is simple to make certain that his death mattered. What do you expect me to do? Just ignore what you just told me? I mean, reaching a certain level of greatness absolve you from your crimes? Yes, of course it does. I took an oath. I'm an old man, Todd. I'm old and I'm sick. And I will never be put in jail. You understand me? It just ain't gonna happen. Putting me on trial will only accomplish two things. A waste of the taxpayer's money and the gutting of every bill I have on the floor now. Bills that will help your constituents. I don't have constituents, Senator. Yet. I sought your daddy's advice before I came here. He told me what you hope to do with your life. Now you ask yourself, what's more important? Embarrassing an old man or getting the chance one day to take your own place here? finish the job that I started. So you're telling me to let you go because it'd be a good career move for me? No. I'm telling you it is your only career move. Sir, we've got to go. All right, I know. So, you're going to arrest me? Or can I go now? Thank you. 
Anybody, uh, anybody know what happened? Rick's fell down the stairs and broke his neck. When? A couple papers sitting there. It must have happened a couple days ago. Rick's always got his papers in the morning. Well, we had to see, right? You did everything that you could. Yeah, well, I could. You should call me sometime. Hey, you want to go get a bite to eat? No, I think I'm going to stay a while longer. What? The class cut king is staying late? Yeah, make up for lost time. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Here is a strike.